Hi everyone, Aisha with Retro Handhelds. This week, we have the RJ351V as our Handheld of the Week. If you want to get all the latest news, stay up to date with everything we're doing, or even participate in Handheld of the Week, be sure to follow us on all our socials. We are on Instagram, Facebook, we have a Facebook group, Discord, Twitter, everywhere. Those are going to be linked out below. And if you like this video, like the content we're doing, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. Like I was saying, this week we have the RG351B as our handle of the week. This is yet another one in the line of 3326 devices, but if you ask me, it's the best one. Main reason, it's a giant Game Boy and the Game Boy is just a special handheld. On this one, I have a couple mods that make it look a lot more like Game Boy DMG. These are the Sakura retro modding sticker and buttons. There's also a battery mod on this one, which I'm going to get into a little bit more here in a little while. But this video, we're just going to highlight it a little bit, talk about it, and see if it's still worth it. You know, and there's a newer handholds out right now. Others in this very same form factor, we have the 353V, there's a 35XX that came out, there's the smaller options like the Mio Mini. So is the 351B still worth it today? I say yes. Now, one of the main reasons for that is, again, it's a giant Game Boy. What's not to love about that? It's very comfortable, it's very durable, it's very solid. You feel like you just throw this in a bag and it's gonna be just fine. It fits the hands nicely, the buttons feel great on it, the D-pad is great on it. On this one, I'm running Amber Elec, which I might actually be switching here pretty soon. We have um, somebody in the community, uh, Retro GFX, is actually putting out builds of unofficial OS, which is basically just Jealous. Uh, as some of you might know, Jealous isn't gonna be putting out any more builds, so somebody stepped up and did that. And as support, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump on it too, give it a go. So the OS is gonna be changing on this one, but for right now, we're just gonna talk about what this can do. Being that it's an RK3326 device, this can play all the way up to some Dreamcast and N64. Uh, personally, I don't really keep those systems on this one. I like this for more of the handheld stuff, you know, a little bit more of a pure retro handheld. I like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance on it, Super Nintendo, all the way up to PlayStation 1. It can do more than that, but that's kind of where I like to cut it off. It, it could also do some pretty good DS, but there's no touchscreen on this. So I'll save that for a different handheld. But the systems that I do keep on here look fantastic, mainly because of the amazing screen on this handheld. That is one of the big reasons why it's still worth it even today with other options available. It's just the screen is really, really that good. And we're gonna get into some comparisons right now actually just to show you how great it is. All right, now the first game I wanna compare here is gonna be Super Metroid. Top one is the Retro Pocket 3. This is also gonna to apply to the 3 Plus because if I'm not mistaken, it's actually gonna be the same screen. And one of the reasons I picked this one is because the Retro Pocket 3 has a very, very good screen. So I thought, hey, why not put it up against one of the better newer devices out there as far as this place goes. And as you can see, both look great. Even though the Retro Pocket 3 has a 16x9 screen, you can see that the actual game display is going to be about the same because they're both running 4x3 content. So I'm going to bring this one up a little bit closer here. So the colors on the Retro Pocket 3 look a little bit brighter, but the actual saturation of them, I prefer it on the 351V. Retro Pocket 3 is going to look a lot brighter, but I still think 351V looks great. And the size is about the same on both of them. Sorry for the reflections on the screens. It's very hard to get good lighting and still and not get the lamps to show up on camera. I've been working on that though. But yeah, there you go. That's the first comparison. Bright on the Retro Pocket 3 colors. Personally, I prefer them on the 351V. Let's go to the next system. Okay, so the next one I do want to do a little comparison with here is going to be the 505 because it's got an OLED screen, so why not? <laughs> and as you can see, there is a difference in the colors, but if you, they both look great, really. But if I had to pick which one I prefer, I'm still going to say the 351V. The colors just look a little bit more correct right there. And this game is going to be Yoshi's Island. The reason I picked that one is because they were very, very colorful games. Now, the blacks on both of them are going to be very deep. So even though this isn't an OLED screen, it's just an IPS screen, it looks great. If you ask me, it's one of the best screens in really any handheld right now. So let's get into the game really quick so we can see how everything looks. 
right there. And as you can see, there's a difference in the colors. I did mention that I prefer the 351V. Let's get into both of them. Just see this cutscene run a little bit. And you can see a big difference as far as how the temperature of the screen changes. Now, I love the 505. Um, I've actually play it more than my retro pocket 3 um, and not just because power wise even if i'm playing the same systems like psp still runs pretty good on the retro pocket 3 i still prefer the 505 it just feels more comfortable in my hands but with these older systems this 4x3 systems at the 351v just looks fantastic and now one thing i will mention though is it is a little bit bigger in the uh, 505 that's just a scaling thing you could probably adjust that but yeah i still think the 351v screen looks fantastic there you just a quick little comparison on the screen really any device you throw at this the screen's gonna hold its own it, it looks great now some of the mods that i have in here is sakura retro modding buttons and stickers i have an Android go super battery pretty sure i got that one right uh so battery life is great on this thing uh it's a believe it's a 4000 milliamp battery if you're interested in a teardown of this and just to see how to get those in there let me know in the comments and we can definitely do a video on that um, it is an older device, but really, once you kind of take apart one vertical handheld, you kind of take them all apart. So it's just, man, yeah, might be something fun to do. But yeah, this video was just uh, meant to be a little bit of love for the 351V. Not necessarily going to be a deep review or getting into anything crazy like that. It's just, hey, handheld of the week. Let's talk about it a little bit. Let's give it some, some shine. I hope you guys liked the video. If you want more videos like this, just very casual videos talking about handhelds, let us know in the comments. You know, the feedback is always very much appreciated. It's really kind of lets us know what to put out there besides just the big reviews or stuff like that. Uh, we really want to put stuff out that you guys are going to enjoy. So if things like this are on there, definitely let us know. We thank you. I really hope you liked the video. Just a really simple video today. Very casual. Oh, and I almost forgot. Yes, it is 100% still worth it. This is an awesome handheld. Fits great in the hand. Feels awesome. Very sturdy. So if you don't have one, if you want a great vertical handheld, that's going to be a little bit bigger than what's available right now, which if you ask me is a good thing. You know, you don't want it to be too small. Nothing against the Mio Mini. I love my Mio Mini, but you know, this is more comfortable. Don't hesitate. Pick one up. All right, guys. See you next time.